Well, what a wonderful privilege it is to have the opportunity to speak with you and to listen to these amazing speakers. Uh, it's amazing. Thank you very much indeed. Humans have this amazing capacity to work in teams. We come together in small groups to achieve shared objectives and we benefit from the results of our shared working together. And we build interdependent cooperative relationships. We are amazing at doing this. We did it 150,000 years ago on the savannah to catch antelope in order to feed our groups, our tribes. An incredibly complex form of teamworking is required to catch an antelope. Through our teamwork, we have explored the structure of our own life form in the human genome. We've explored the very beginnings of our universe back to the Big Bang. We are incredible at doing this teamworking thing. We have another amazing capacity too, which is called human consciousness. You have it. You have it. We all have it. It's the capacity as well to be self-aware, to reflect on our experience, to learn from our experience, and to find new creative ways of adapting to the challenges which face us, which previous speakers have so passionately and eloquently described. Let me demonstrate it to you. What I'd like you to do is just kind of stop for a minute. Be still. Close your eyes, if you would. Just feel what's going on for you at the moment. What are you feeling? Take a deep breath. What are you thinking? And now take the spotlight of your attention to your breathing. Just watch your breathing. Follow it as it goes in and out. Mindful attention. Now let your attention go to your whole body. Sensation of your body sitting in the chair. Your feet on the floor sensation of your body in the space in this room. And when you're ready, just very gently open your eyes. We have this capacity to be self-aware, to turn the spotlight of our consciousness wherever we choose, to be aware of the challenges which face us and respond accordingly. And if we combine these two capacities, fantastic teamwork and awareness, we can release the abundance, the fountain of, of team creativity. We've been doing research, my colleagues and I, for the last 20 years on a program of research we call reflexivity, which is the extent to which teams reflect upon what it is they're trying to achieve and how they're going about it and how they make changes accordingly. And what we found is that teams that do more of that reflection are much more productive and much more creative and innovative than teams that don't. Indeed, we've done research over the last 10 years looking at the functioning of teams in the English National Health Service, surveying across 350 organizations. And what we found is that in those hospitals where teams take more time out to reflect on what it is they're trying to achieve and how they're going about it, rates of innovation in patient care are much higher and mortality rates of patients are lower. And in hospitals where teams take less time to reflect upon what it is they're trying to achieve and how they're going about it, error rates are much higher, errors that could harm patients or staff, injuries to staff are higher, there's more violence against staff, there's less innovation in patient care, and mortality rates are significantly higher. So it's a profound example of the importance of taking time out in teams to reflect, to turn the spotlight of awareness upon our functioning. But the problem is, you know, in modern organizations, that there is a pathology of busyness. You know it, don't you? Send more emails. Receive more emails. Have more meetings. Produce more pieces of paper. 
We spin the wheel very fast in modern organizations. And when the pressure comes on, you know what we seem to do is spin it faster and faster. There's a problem. Let's just work harder and faster. And there seems to me a pathology, which means we don't stop. <sighs> Step back, reflect. How can we respond most smartly, creatively to the challenges that face us? So that's what I'm suggesting we do in teams. And the evidence supports that it's a really profoundly successful strategy. So what should we do? Should we teach our team members all to come together and sit cross-legged in the full lotus posture, reflecting upon what it means to be a team in this vast universe? Well, maybe. Uh, that might help. But uh, I think it's really important that we reflect on the areas that are going to be most profound in terms of ena enabling creativity. And there are five that I want to suggest to you. The first is the team vision. The second is what I've called the dance. The third is diversity, the management of diversity. The fourth is positivity. And the fifth is quality. Vision. I was at a senior management team meeting of a major aerospace industry a couple of years ago. And the senior management team was talking about their vision. To maximize shareholder value. didn't really do it for me. I doubted it did it for many of their employees or even those in the team. Compare Google's vision, which is to organize the world's information to make it universally accessible and useful. That starts to get my juices flowing. So it's about thinking about to what extent do we have a team vision and do we live by it. But what's also important is to match that vision with clear objectives. We know that clarity of objectives in teams is a real predictor of team creativity and innovation. Clear objectives agreed by the team members, but they must also be challenging objectives because challenge is a source of creativity for humanity, that we respond to challenge by thinking creatively. So we must make sure that team objectives are challenging. And ideally, one of those objectives in any organization should always be improving the effectiveness with which we work with other teams in the organization that we need to work with. Because managing that inter-team tension is a source of creative thinking and creativity which we need. And we also need that collaboration within organizations. So that's vision. The second area is what I've called the dance. I was at a conference on teamwork in Oxford a few years ago, and there was a wonderful presentation from the director of the National Contemporary Youth Dance Theatre in England. And he was talking about a young team that he'd been working with who were desperately working hard for their first public performance for months, interrogating themselves about how well they were dancing together, learning from each other, coaching each other, constantly reflecting on their performance. And when the first night came, they were so nervous, they went on stage, they were into the dance, and at about three minutes into it, the CD inexplicably skipped across a really important piece of music. Oh. But he said, nobody noticed but him and the dance team. They danced so intuitively, so collaboratively, so spontaneously, so synchronously, and so magically that they produced the most amazing performance. And he said it was because they had worked and reflected so hard upon their working together in the months prior to the performance. So we need teams to reflect continually about how well are we working? Are we listening to one another? Are we making decisions effectively? How do we manage constructive controversy? Are we supporting and, yes, caring for one another in the team sufficiently? We see you know, sports teams uh, reflecting in this way. You know, football teams, soccer teams at half time. During the break, they'll say, what are we doing? What do we need to change? How can we be more effective? One of the manufacturing organizations I worked in, we saw cellular assembly teams on the, on the shop floor. When they began to make a new product, they would regularly videotape themselves in order that they could watch how they were working as a team and develop new and improved ways of working so they could manufacture the products more effectively. So the dance, we need to reflect on the dance. And we need to reflect on diversity. You know, I, I think it's so important the whole of humanity needs to recognize that difference is a source of creativity, that the difference 
differences between us are so valuable for our learning, for our creativity. If you bring together a group of people from very diverse backgrounds in teams, it feels uncomfortable when we start to work together. We don't work together so effectively because of this diversity of opinions. But if this group of people can be positive about the differences between them, if this group of people can listen to each other, can share ideas, then what we see is the springing up of creativity. And those groups are much more productive and innovative and creative than groups which are homogenous in, in uh, composition. And it's not just about you know, differences between people, but differences in opinions in teams. We need to reflect on how well do we manage dissent. What do we do when a minority in the team disagrees? Do we suppress the dissent? Do we very quickly try to reach a resolution because it feels uncomfortable that we're disagreeing? Or do we explore those differences to really try to understand the, the perspectives of everybody within the team that will lead to our creative thinking and to the production of creative ideas. And the fourth is positivity. Positive emotion. When we feel positive emotion, when we feel safe, we're much more likely to innovate and take risks. If children have positive, strong attachments with their parents, they're much more likely to explore their worlds as they develop. When I left university many years ago, I went and worked in a coal mine for a year as a labourer. Fascinating. Very challenging, unsafe environment. But what was remarkable about that environment was that all of the men, they were all men, working underground, were absolutely focused on looking out for each other's safety. There was a, a hugely strong culture of safety. And also an amazing culture of humour. Everyone had such quick wit. I felt like a baby amongst them in terms of this positivity. And what that created was an environment which enabled everybody to deal and adapt to the challenges that such a hostile environment creates for, human, for human beings. So, you know, it's really important to understand the role of positive emotion in, in our experience in teams. If you induce positive emotion in a three-year-old, she will produce more creative paintings. And she will play more altruistically and cooperatively with other three-year-olds. And the same is true for 83-year-olds, in fact. When leaders of service teams are positive, team members cooperate more with each other. And those who are on the receiving end of the service report better service. Optimistic life insurance agent teams sell much more life insurance. When teams have high levels of positive emotion, they manage conflicts much more effectively and they negotiate much more effectively. Positive teams produce more creative ideas as well. So it's really important that we reflect in our teams on how positive are we, how supportive are we. But, you know, it's not just about positive emotion. We need to be angry and anxious at times. That's important for human survival. What Barbara Fredrickson's work at the University of Michigan has shown is it is the ratio of positive to negative experiences that is really important. We need to be having a minimum of three positive for every negative interactions in our teams. The same is true in, in relationships, by the way, five to one. But don't start counting. That's the road to hell. <laughs> the, the lesson, of course, is... Give lots of hugs, be positive, give good positive experiences in relationships. So it's about the ratio in teams. But it, this is not about as team members being artificially happy on a grim Monday morning. It's about us as team members being real, genuine with each other, being real, being open to each other, being curious, wanting to learn, being kind in our relationships, in teams and organizations, and being appreciative of each other and creating that positive uh, balance that we need to release team creativity. And the final area is quality, the extent to which, really, we focus on quality work in, in what we do. Craft work, excellence, releases team creativity. We've been working with top management boards for a number of years now, and we've seen two kind of patterns in top management boards in relation to quality. What many of them do is they seem to seek 
data that tells them everything's okay in terms of our quality. They're looking for comfort from the data that they collect about quality. And then in other boards, what we see is they're looking for data that tells them unexpected things, data that surprises them and says, we really need to improve what we're doing in this area. And it's really fascinating how the focus of the top management team permeates down through the organization. So in the first type of organization, people are very concerned about providing information that will comfort the top management team. And that might mean massaging some of the data. Whereas in the other type of organization, there seems to be a real commitment to wanting to learn, to find new and improved ways of doing things constantly. So we need teams to reflect on, are we really focused on providing high quality in all we do? So these five areas are where I think we need to be focusing in teams, reflecting on our visions, reflecting on the dance, reflecting on how we manage diversity and, and also how we manage dissent and reflecting on quality and positivity. But reflecting on all that I've just said to you, it's also, I think, important to recognize that it takes courage to stop when you're really busy and under pressure. Actually, to have the courage as a team leader to say, OK, this, the going's tough, but let's step back and reflect on what we need to do, how we could do this more effectively. It takes courage to even reflect in the first place, because when we reflect, what we see is a discrepancy between the, uh, between the ideal of how we'd like to be as a team and the reality of how we're performing, and that creates discomfort. It takes courage to be persistent and to turn creative ideas into innovation that we implement effectively within our organizations. And it takes courage to have a vision and to be determined as a team to live by that vision. You know, given what we've heard from Anna and Anna before about the challenges that we face, we really need all our teams and organizations to have a commitment, uh, a vision, where they're trying to help to improve our planet, to help also people in society to be safer. A vision where we have a focus on helping people in society to be healthier and to be happier and to be able to live with greater ease. And I think when our teams are focused on those visions and take time for, for reflection, then truly we release the abundance of team creativity. Thank you very much. <laughs>